The following interview is being conducted for the Veterans History Project at the Library of Congress. My name is Caitlin Potter and I will be interviewing Mike Lux, who is my opa or grandpa. Um, my mom, Michelle Potter, is assisting in the interview. This interview is taking place on May 28 in Caledonia. And Mike's birthday is September 8, 1935. He did not serve in any war, but was a civilian in World War II. Tell me a little bit about your family and your life before the war. But uh, my family, not my family, my mother worked, my fa my sister worked, my brother worked, my father worked, mm -hmm. and I used to get up like seven o'clock, eight o'clock by myself, mm -hmm. and I was a little scared, but I had to fend for myself. Mm -hmm. That's that's how life usually works because everybody had to chip in and work. Mm -hmm. We were happy before the war. We had lots of food. We had no toys, but we all were happy. Mm -hmm. All the kids were on their own. When you were six, seven, you were on your own. There was nobody babysitting you. Right. Which is the. You play together, so we fight together sometimes, <laughs> but most of the time you got along. How old were you when the war started? When the war started, I was five years old. Really? And, but the war didn't start by us. There was no front. There was mm -hmm. the German soldiers occupied the area in Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. There was no fighting there. Right. Not till 1944. Where did you live and what was the situation around where you kind of were? But there was a, a small town. I mean, it was a town of mm -hmm. approximately 6,000 people. And that's uh, you went to school in the in the summertime. You had vacations, mm -hmm. like uh, maybe four weeks or five weeks. I wasn't like here. And as kids, we got together and played our own game mm -hmm. without supervision. There was nobody had time to supervise kids. Mm -hmm. Kids were on their own, basically. The goal of the Yugoslavian government was to destroy all the Germans, to starve them on hunger, mm -hmm. or whatever means possible. What were any moves or transitions that your family went through? Well, the there war? was uh, during the war, my brother ended up in the German army. My father ended up in the German army, and my sister, she ended up, uh, after the war was over, she ended up as a prisoner in Russia, and my mother ended up in a hard labor camp, because that's, that was the general idea to get rather the Germans, mm -hmm. you know. And so after that, I was like alone for a month. I lived in the house by myself, and the neighbors sort of took care of me. They gave me some food, and that's, uh, and then the, on Good Friday in 1945, they came and they gave you five minutes to leave the house. That they went from, that was uh, uh, the Titos are partisans. They were guerrilla fighters. They, mm -hmm. they just came and, and you had to leave everything behind. They gave you five minutes to grab whatever you want. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, whatever you can carry, like mm -hmm. food or 
So I, I was too little to think about it. Mm -hmm. All I took is a little sack, mm -hmm. and I put a dinner plate in, a knife, a fork, and a spoon. Mm -hmm. And that's how I left my house. Mm -hmm. That's the last time I seen it. Then after the gathered all the people on a big meadow. They put us like in two streets before the railroad stations. Mm -hmm. They put everybody in the houses, like maybe 10, 20 people to a room overnight. Mm -hmm. And then they loaded us up into cattle wagons and shipped us to a town which was like a concentration camp. It was actually a regular town. Mm -hmm. But they gathered people from, I don't know how many towns, at least 15, 20 towns. You had in a regular bedroom, you had like maybe 10 people sleeping. Mm -hmm. You just uh, spread straw and put a blanket over them there. That was your bedding. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, and times were really bad, there was no food. Uh, we used to, they had like, uh, each street had a kitchen. And what they did, they, they cooked uh, ground up corn. And you got like a coffee cup for each person, got a coffee cup for at noon, mm -hmm. and a coffee cup for at nights. They had sometimes, they had like pea soup. Mm -hmm. And all the food was without salt and out fat. Mm -hmm. I was just, uh, they had the minimum fat just so the stuff sticks together. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's where we were for like uh, almost two years. And so how old were you when you were taken to there? I was... Uh, I was uh, nine and a half, okay. and I was by myself for a year mm -hmm. because my mother didn't. She was in a hard labor camp, and she, till she escaped there, mm -hmm. and she, she didn't know. Nobody knew from each other if you were alive or not. Mm -hmm. They just took a chance, mm -hmm. and we found each other. Mm -hmm. Well, we were in the camp as kids. We used to have a scar at the town, we were scattered with soldiers on every main street. And as kids, you used to sneak out at night and hide in a pile of straw in the, in the country. Mm -hmm. And then you walk to the city. The city was like 10 miles away from the camp. And you go back and from house to house. And you had to, some of them Serbian people or Yugoslavian people, they had pity and they, they gave us scraps of food here and there. Mm -hmm. And that's basically how we survived. Mm -hmm. The people that didn't have any kids and so they perished because if you got caught, Many times we got caught, they beat us up and mm -hmm. threw us in the cellar for three, four days. And, but we, we never lost courage. We just, just kept, kept doing the same yeah, thing again. You know, that's, that's the way you survived. Mm -hmm. And clothes, I, you always had to say that you could, there was no such thing as stores or, or anything. Uh, there was no doctors, there was nothing. It's just, they might have, I don't know, 30, 40,000 people in a town. Mm -hmm. they, like I said, there, there was no, there was no dentist, no doctors, no nothing. You mm -hmm. on your own. That's mm -hmm. uh, how that basically was. Mm -hmm. So how are you? treated by the soldiers like on, well, on day to day. You didn't go out, you you didn't want to be in contact because especially me, I've, since I was alone, they, they took kids that had no parents and 
transported into the lower part of Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. So we, I was always hiding. I was with my, with an aunt of mine. She took care of me. I took care of her, and she took care of me. I gave her a little food, and she, when we went begging, and that's basically everybody helped each other. Mm -hmm. Every day was a mm -hmm. different story. Right. You never know what happened the next day. Mm -hmm. Like this, like I used to go usually begging twice a week mm -hmm. to get scraps of food, and that's the, that's the, was the daily life. From while well, I I got the, we got caught once at the, at, at the night time, and this this when we tried to enter the town, we got uh, stopped, and we stopped. We were like five, six kids, mm -hmm. but the soldiers couldn't see us because we were in the shade of a big tree. Mm -hmm. And so they started shooting. Mm -hmm. we, we were scared, we were still, when they said to stop, we just stood there. So when they started shooting, they, I got like crazed with a bullet on my leg, then I started screaming. Mm -hmm. but, um, then they just picked us up and threw us in the cellar. Mm -hmm. You never know how long you stay there. It's one day, two days, five days. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's really, everybody had the same. Mm -hmm. There was no, nobody got favored. They just treated everybody basically very inhumane. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, but I guess that's part of all. Mm -hmm. uh, I was not the only kid that had no parents. The, mm -hmm. What happens? They, they just put everybody in hard labor camps. And when you were alone, well, when they came and threw you out and they gave you five minutes, you had to you just tag along. That's, mm -hmm. That's how that was, mm -hmm. you know. But we had we couldn't play like on the street or so because you were scared. Mm -hmm. Because they might take you and they don't uh, they had no no sense of uh, right or wrong. They, mm -hmm. what they basically tried to do, they try to hurt people. Mm -hmm. You know, so and like women like nobody could go begging and accept kids because if they, they, all the men were in the war, there was only grown-ups left, but if they would go back, they would kill them. Mm -hmm. They'd rape them, kill them, beat them to death. That's how many of them, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Of course, as kids, we didn't realize that part. We thought we were big guys when we were 10, 11. Yeah. You were on your own. Mm -hmm. um, you can do it, believe me. You could do it too if you mm -hmm. have to. Everybody can. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell me about your family reuniting after, and when did that well, happen? Well, this event, the, the, the beginning, like I told you, mm -hmm. my mother was in the hard labor camp, the sister in Russia, my brother was a prisoner of war, mm -hmm. my father was a prisoner of war, so when we escaped the concentration camp in 1946 on Christmas, and we walked from Yugoslavia basically to Germany. Mm -hmm. That was like three months. You had trains when you could, and the rest of the time you walked through snow, whatever. Mm -hmm. And when we we had a destination, I had an uncle that lived in Germany. So we had an address, and that was our destination. So when we crossed the border into Germany, 
we went to the railroad station to, to find out how, how we get to that town, since we didn't know where it was. We ran into a friend of my mother's. She, she was in Germany already, and she says, your husband and your mother are in the waiting room on the railroad station. They were looking for us to the Red Cross, mm -hmm. and we had no idea where my grandma was or, or my father. That's how we united. And then my my brother, in the meantime, was home from the. I mean, he was in Germany. He got released, and he had the same address we had. So his. Thing went, he went to to that town where my uncle was, mm -hmm. and my grandmother was there then, and then my sister, she joined us like five years later, she got released from the Russian prison. So basically we are all united in one town in Germany, and from there, my sister got married and mm -hmm. we moved to various places in Germany and one day I decided to come to America so that's how I ended up here. Mm -hmm. that's, about, uh, that's about the story. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, there was many people that had uh, the same experience. Mm -hmm. We we all basically had the same experience. Like I say, when I talk about, I hate talking about this thing. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's so. It's like really unreal. So. How did those experiences affect your life after going to America and stuff like that? It did not affect me. I block it out. Mm -hmm. I don't want to remember it mm -hmm. because it doesn't sound like it's true. Right. And so I just block it out. I have no, I never think about it. And I, I never had any ill effects. I know a lot of people that do, mm -hmm. they still, they still have nightmares about it. There is some people in Detroit that were in the same camp. Mm -hmm. I, I myself, I never had uh, a problem. Never I'd, had nightmares or anything. No, I just night. block it out. Mm -hmm. That's uh, part of history. Basically, I always had a good time mm -hmm. after the war. We went to Germany. When we were in Germany, everything was fine. Even in the concentration camp, it was fine. We just were hungry. Mm -hmm. We all looked like, see, we all were skin and bones and scabs. That's what we had over our body. Mm -hmm. But like I said, you can't remember everything. Mm -hmm. That's basically... Everybody had them, when you watch the TV, when the kids have them big bellies mm -hmm. and big ears and <laughs> skinny feet, that's how we look. That's mm -hmm. how we, that's how I looked when I got to Germany. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was full of scabs and when I used to get cold, I, my skin was like blue. Mm -hmm. Till of course now it's okay. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the story of, there was some story about a cow or something. Oh, when, when we escaped from the concentration camp, I was like a group of people, about maybe 40, 50, I don't know exactly. When we hit the border, they started shooting with the machine gun because they kill people daily. They try to stop you from leaving. 
we cross over into Hungary, to the, over the Hungarian border, mm -hmm. and we we got split up and I ended up finding my mom again. So we just kept walking. We had no no destination. Mm -hmm. So we seen this uh, house that had light on. So we go over there and the, the farmer and his wife, they were in the in the barn where they had the cows and the the cow was having a, a young calf. Oh. So we ended up pulling on a rope. They had a rope to pull it out. That was the that was exciting. <laughs> I was about twelve years old at that time when, okay. when that happened. Cool. Did you stay in that barn with that farmer? No, we continued. They gave us a little food and then we continued okay. to the next town. We found a place, we stayed a couple of days and then we continued. I said we walked from basically Yugoslavia to Germany. We walked through Hungary, Hungary through Austria to Germany. Okay. For, I always have trouble understanding the geography of all of that, but you had told me a story before about what happened when you reached the border? Of well, we reached the border between Hungary and Austria, and we were just about made the border. All of a sudden, the Hungarian border police started shooting, and they thought we were Russians because mm -hmm. Hungary was occupied by Russians. Okay. And the Russians, they used the steel stuff, so they started shooting. Then they, since they started shooting, they had to take us back to their complex. Mm -hmm. And then they waited, they fed us real good, and then at four o'clock in the morning, they loaded us up on sleds because there was quite a bit of snow. Mm -hmm. And they transported us to the border and says, here you go. Mm. <laughs> so we, you basically had to go begging for, for three months for food because you had no currency to buy anything. Mm -hmm. So, but people were okay. Now you used to tell me a story about how you got turned back from some borders. But that was... Uh, was that the border? Because you yeah. said something about you cried or... But that was every time we crossed the border, like in in Austria, if we crossed from the Russian sector into the American sector, they always had border police. Mm -hmm. So if you had no no registration, no passport or nothing. So you, when they try to send you back, you, the trick was you you cry and pretend you're really sad. And, <laughs> and then sometimes you find, they say, well, let them go. They let one or two people go and the rest they send back. Oh, okay. <clears throat> when we entered Germany, we, it was in a rainy morning. It was March the 25th, 47. Mm. We, the first guy we asked where the railroad station was, mm -hmm. he happened to be a border police. Mm. So he tried to send us back over to Austria again. Mm. And the same thing. I started crying and wailing away. And then he finally told us where the railroad station is, <laughs> and that's how we, that's when we met this uh, lady that uh, was from our hometown, and she was a friend of my mother, and she says, your husband and your mother are in the waiting room. We had no idea if they're alive or, that's how we met each other. That's a, that's, a, that's a funny story, but it's the truth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So your dad was, where was your dad at? <clears throat> My dad, he was a prisoner of war in Russia, in Siberia. Okay. And 
How did he escape that area? He didn't escape. He was very sick. They let him go. They released him. He used to, my dad was a big guy. He weighed about 250. He had 89 pounds when they released him. So he was lucky to be alive. He had a good doctor that sort of nourished him back. And my dad always said if it wouldn't be for Dr. Schwartz, I think his name was Schwartz, he, he wouldn't be alive. Hmm. So Was there a story uh, about, didn't he have to like dig his own grave? No, no, the, 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 the men folks in our town, okay. <clears throat> they used to come with the drums, you know, mm -hmm. and gather everybody together and all the, the men from 16 to 60 had to come in the town square. So they, they locked them up in the church and they sent 80 guys back home. And there wasn't that many people. They took 400, I mean 240 people they took. And nobody ever heard of them. They, they had to take their own graves and they got shot between our town and the mm. next town, you mm. know. And that was common that, uh, I mean that happened that you have to take your own grave and then they just shoot you. They, we used to we used to get locked up sometimes when we go back and when they catch us, they they we, they 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 have about maybe twenty dirty kids together. Then they used to march us and we had to sing Hitler songs. Hmm. And then uh, when we start singing the Hitler songs, then they beat us up. <laughs> <laughs> they had their fun with us. <laughs> So <laughs> it wasn't always funny, but it's the, the elder guys, like uh, boys that were like, uh, I mean, we to us, they were grown ups, they were like maybe 16, 17. They used to beat them up so bad that they break down the blood all over, they didn't care. And that's how things were. I mean, that's what my mother said. They, they beat, they made them work on their house or tracks and beat them up so bad that the, that the flesh hangs from their bones. Mm. That's, uh, and it's like the, my mother, they had it. Uh, they were women. They were, were young women. They couldn't even put straw on the floor. They had to sleep on the bear. There, and we didn't have no wooden floors. That was that was all stamped, uh, stamped uh, mud. Yeah. They they had like a mix. They make sure that with with uh, from wheat and stuff like that. They mix that stuff together. Mm -hmm. So they, that's how they that's how they slept. They had to sleep in the in the open field. There was no room. I said basically it was the destruction of the of the the Germans, the, the Germans in Yugoslavia, that's what they tried to do. Mm -hmm. So the, why were the Russians The Russians the Russians came through Romania, came up from Yugoslavia. All they did the what they did, they drove the German army back. Okay. So the, the Russians only marched through like for, like in my grandma's town, they, walked, they marched through the three days and three nights. Just a, a mass of, of uh, horse and buggies and, and marchers. They had no, no motorized things. Mm -hmm. I'd never seen any. They had them little we called them bunny wagons. They had small little horses, and each wagon had I don't know maybe ten, fifteen soldiers. Mm. There was women and mostly men folks, but there was also that's the first time I seen a female soldier. Mm. But the Russians actually treated us good. 
they can't say nothing bad. Except at night they used the the women had to hide. Mm -hmm. When they started drinking, then they got violent. But basically, as uh, as kids, they treated good. They, mm -hmm. You know, they we understood a little bit what they were saying. And especially our town, they had like a saying that sort of rhymed. They says, "Gara show Philip of up." That's what sort of Philip of Hope was our t name oh, of okay. our town. And Gara show means good in Russia. Okay. So that's uh, they uh, they patted us on the back. And but they'd also sh beat you up at times. <laughs> but not the Russians. No. Not the Russians. Who beat the, you up then? The partisans, the Titos. Uh, they was good. They were. That was, the Tito didn't have a regular army. Those were all guerrilla fighters. Mm -hmm. The most of the people that beat us up were people that were Serbians that used to work for the German farmers. And they just didn't, they stole everything they can. I said, you had no rights. As a German, you had no rights. They could come in your house and open any drawer or anything they want you, you could not say no. You let them do what they want. If you object, they shoot you. That's the way it was, you know. So how did you come... Once, once the war was over, when the occupation came, Germ the Germans lost every, every right. They had no, no right to nothing. That's, that's the way it was. So your family came to settle in Yugoslavia, how? Well, they, they, they migrated down there maybe 300 years ago. Mm -hmm. There was a Kaiser from Austria and Hungarian Empire. They promised the people like land. You had to go down to work. You had to that used to be a swamp that was in the Danube Delta. That was all low ground, and they went down by by wooden uh, boats. Not boats, actually. They like rafts or something. Like raft with wooden rafts. They mm -hmm. they went from Germany. And they came not only from Germany. They came from they they had from France. They had from Germany from Czechoslovakia, that was all, even from Russia. Mm -hmm. There was people that migrated down there about 300 years ago. Mm -hmm. And the, the most people that went there, they got like a, a guarantee to get so much land. Mm -hmm. And then as times went on, the, the smarter people bought the the other guy's house, so you had big farmers and basically over there you didn't work for money. You worked for for food. Like when like my parents they worked for a farmer. Every ten bushel that they harvested belonged to us. Okay. And so share crop farming. Basically. That's exactly what that was, yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's a, and so that, just trying to tie that all together, so your family was living in that region of my Yugoslavia, family, my family, and it was a large community of German people. That was the whole Yugoslavia had communities, Germany. We, that was only like a few uh, towns that were 100% German. Okay. And our town was 100% German. Okay. And so <coughs> the, was it? What was Tito's title? What was his Tito? He he was like a president. He okay. He was uh, he was actually a guerrilla fighter, and they had uh, two factions. He was a communist, and there was another guy. He he was more on the German side, but then he went. They were fighting each, each other. Tito and Mikhailovich was the other guy. Mm -hmm. And Tito ended up winning. And 
see what happens. That's how all the Germans, the, like my sister and, and Uncle Jakob, Tito promised the Russians uh, as instead payment, he promised them labor. Mm -hmm. So that's how they they used the common says uh, you bring food for 15 days and they ship like two, three trains with full of cattle wagons into Russia. That's how they... Of people? Yeah, of mm -hmm. people, yeah. That's uh, like we had no idea if my sister was alive or, or not. They'll, Maybe a couple months before they got released, we found out that they're going to come. Now, was she released af how many years after the war? Was five years. Five years after the war She ended? was five years in Russia. Or five years during the war or five no, years af after? Every, all that happened after the war. Oh. During the war, we had... Uh, no problem. We had no problems. We ne we never got bombed. <clears throat> we used to see the American planes fly down there, the bombers, mm -hmm. the bomb the oil fields in Romania. And as kids, we used to shoot them with the wooden guns. We pretended <laughs> we shoot them down. <laughs> so that's uh, hmm. that's how things were. We. So all of this happened after Everything the conflict of World War II was done then? After World War II, that's when, during World War II we had no problems. Hmm. We had lots of food, we had as much food as you want. That was like the, that was the bread basket of, uh, of Yugoslavia. Okay. Once they kicked the Germans out, they we were starving themselves because they didn't want to work. Hmm. It's uh, the Germans who had all the farms, that's why the hate wars, you know, they had nothing, but they didn't want to work, they want to get it for nothing. Mm -hmm. So they got there after the war, they got their wish, they just took everything mm -hmm. and they come, you, they take your money, they take anything you had. Huh. Any, any valuable stuff, they just confiscated it. Hmm. They didn't ask you if you want to give it away or not. My cousin was uh, standing, uh, living with his aunt because uh, his folks were, is my uncle, mm -hmm. that were living in Germany. So they sent the kids to Yugoslavia because of the bombings. So when we got into the concentration camp, his grandma died. So the aunt had to take over. And so when they found out after my mother got reunited, reunited mm -hmm. with me, they had many kids, so they asked my mother if she would take care of them, which she did, but he, he ended up, uh, he had some type of sickness, I really can't. Uh, but anyway, I, I never forget the experience when he died. He was... Uh, I don't know if he was hallucinating, but he seen the angels, he seen the gate, and, he, and his, uh, I'll never forget the sight. Mm -hmm. He was the happiest guy he seen heaven. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that was another one of them stories. There is many stories, Caitlin. Mm -hmm. and, Everybody had different experiences. Mm -hmm. For me, it was very hard because I, I never had anybody with me for a year. Mm -hmm. Because my aunt, she had two little kids. They, they took their mother away and put her to Russia. And she died. And that's uh, how life was after the war. The Germans, uh, they, 
it, like I told you, they tried to destroy the German race down mm -hmm. in Yugoslavia. No, she she is talking about when she when when we got into Austria, when we we walked like from Yugoslavia, we walked through Austria, and there was an organization. They they quizzed a, a lot of people, and those are the things. I think I gave you a copy of that. Not that I recall. But, but it's written in German. She, mm. she can, I mean, the stuff she went through, that was awful. That your mother went through? Oh, yeah, it could be. The, I mean, it's all written in here. Uh, what, how did, what did? But he, I mean, they knocked her teeth out, they broke her nose, they, the, I mean, I, the, when they, they had the, they were in hard labor and they had like the the, the, the big guy he was a Jew and he hit everybody with the, with the whip through the face and they told him they're gonna put him in in caves I mean with wild animals like lions and snakes and, to kill all the Germans because the Germans don't have a right to live on this planet and stuff like that. Those, that's all written in here. Hmm. But it's just, uh, like I said, that's another story. There is so many stories. Everybody goes through. There was thousands of people went through the same thing. And how they, they made like soldiers, they, they had some prisoners, they, they beat them till they died right on the spot in front of people. That's, uh, that's how things worked.